another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom left and corner, this is Ascension, by the way. Bottom left and corner, we have Jumper starting as the pink Terran. Bottom right and corner, we have Rancor starting as the yellow Zerg. This is going to be a fun match altogether because if you have not seen Jumper in STPL, he is a very entertaining Protoss player, an American Protoss who has a lot of just fun builds that he executes and just he can be a very abusive player uh, with his creativity. And I'm excited to see him in BSL Season 13. I'm curious where he's going to end up uh, in the various leagues. But he's going to be an exciting one, so keep an eye. We'll see what he is up to. Hopefully we'll see something exciting out of him this match. He's going up against Rancor once again. And again, kind of the player highlight match for Rancor altogether. Jumper moving forward to go ahead and get a pylon down at Potentially go for a Forge Fast Expand and actually looks like he's going to scout that 12 o'clock location for Rancor. Moving that Overlord should be able to get in position to go ahead and see. Oh, never mind. That was kind of a clever play from Jumper. It looks like he wanted to see if the Overlord was along the way and pulled back. Actually, I'm not sure that's what's happening here. It looks like he was just checking for the Overlord. Decided to move back down. He wanted to get that Forge down first. Or his Gateway. Gateway first. And proceed from there. One thing from this position is I believe Zerglings can flood through that top channel. So we'll see how Jumper defends it following up their Overlord moving and you can see where they can just kind of slot down and straight through. Jumper moving out, I think he is going to go to this bottom right hand base first. Rancor has opened up Overpool once again, just kind of playing that safe, sturdy, old reliable build. Drone moving out to potentially scout again. Looks like Jumper pulling back initially. But now seeing that that drone is not headed to the natural expansion, he's going to go ahead and walk in. He is going to see that spawning pool. So now he's in the situation where he needs to produce the zealots defensively, needs to get more buildings along the way to try to defend. He's going to, oh, just barely misses the blockade of the hatchery at that natural. Rancor's overlord actually out of position to provide scouting information. So I think he realizes where his opponent was, but isn't lining up to the south. Is or moving it to the north, and I'm wondering if this is indicative of of him thinking about doing the, the millimeter drop play. I don't know. We'll see as things progress. But he's not going to have a eyes on the zealots that are being produced on the gateway. It could be he just missed the scout altogether and uh, assumes that his opponent's up to the north because he didn't see the probe moving out from Jumper. In the meantime, he's producing a handful of zerglings. It could also be that he's just like, you know what, I'm just going to scout with my Zerglings and I'm not going to bother with the rest of this. And I want my Overlord out of position so I don't have to deal with additional problems there. His Overlord moving in from the north, he's going to be able to see the Assimilator uh, from that stage. Zerglings pulling back, want to get rid of Jumper's Probe Scout so he can deny information. It looks like there are Zealots with a Probe grouped up on the front, a Nexus on the way. And the Overlord wandering in is going to be able to go ahead and take a look at the Vespine Geyser from this end. I'm wondering if he's just going to camp it right there. In the meantime, gas is up. Looks like we are seeing a two-hatch layer build. And my question out of this is, again, seeing this Overlord so close by, I'm almost wondering if we're going to see the, the millimeter drop build or if we are just... And the typical is more the two-hatch mutilisk play out of this. Rancor taking care of that drone scout, or sorry, that probe scout. It looks like he was a little bit confused because he has a Zergling here at that 12 o'clock location, this Overlord getting the rest of the information. Unfortunately, with the information now in place, I don't think he's going to be able to capitalize. Zergling's moving forward. Yeah, there's a lot of Zealots and probes right here. Photon Cannon morphing in as well. Lair. Should be online in not too long. We do have that cybernetic score about halfway finished. Jumper, I believe he's going to go Stargate. Second gas being grabbed, which does suggest we are going to see, yeah, two hatch mutilisk and in large numbers. Layer in place. There's the spire. So we're out, right around the 630 mark-ish. Should see a flood of mutilisk. Second gas being grabbed. Which suggests that Jumper, is, well, Jumper a little bit delayed on grabbing his Stargate. And every moment counts. He's grabbing that second assimilator to get the additional gas, which suggests he is going to go for more of that gas heavy Dark Templar, um, etc. tech. But right now, 
Zergling's running back across. That Spire's about halfway finished, and he still has not started a Stargate. Going Robotics Facility instead. So he was hoping to get cute at the Natural Expansion. And it's going to cost him this game. So going to be another fast one. A Zealot trying to sneak out from the north. Rancor has eyes on it. The Zealot regrouping. So it looks like it's going to be six Zealots. Jumper was hoping that this was going to be like standard three hatch Hydra or something 973-ish. So he could maybe do kind of a sneaky drop. Three o'clock base. Hatchery being built. But because he skipped Stargate tech and is going straight to Gateway, this is going to be a quick GG because Mutalists are now in production. We also have Carapace being upgraded. The one thing for Rancor is he's building a lot of Scourge. Scourge. And because of that, he might not have as many Mutalisks as he might have. Well, he's definitely not going to have as many Mutalisks as he would have comparatively. Which might give Jumper a little bit of a window to potentially get some cannons down. Scourge moving out. Overlord being spotted. Some Zealots moving out as well. If Jumper presses forward into this, he actually might potentially force the Mutalisks to deal with this army. That could buy Jumper some time to get some cannons down, but... Honestly, yeah, with the Sunken Colony and a handful of Zerglings, the Mutalists, I still feel like, can just go ahead and wander out and do whatever they want and get the damage done. Robotics facility, robotic support bay, I should say, in production. So that's a Reaver first. So it's going to go Reaver drop. Very unusual <clears throat> in PvZ, but this is kind of the stuff you see out of Jumper. So look forward to that in this upcoming season of Shoba League. Going to pay for it right here. So the Zerglings grouping up. They're going to pin those Zealots down. The Zealots trying to move up to that 3 o'clock location, get something accomplished there, but there's not even drones in production just yet. Are there cannons warping in? So there are some cannons warping in. No cannon at that natural expansion, but you can see Jumper's in a lot of trouble. He's got Reavers, which are his primary defense force, and the Mutalist count is growing. And after seeing that, Rancor pressing towards the front, there's only two Zealots to defend, and I believe that Rancor can just take out this cannon with straight-up Mutalisks and let Zerglings flood through, end the game from there. The Scourge actually could even take a couple cannon hits. It looks like the second cannon is warping in. I think this might be too little too late. Third cannon trying to warp in. Yeah, so not even enough cannons in time. A single Dragoon trying to defend what's left here. But with the positioning and the SimCity... A single Dragoon is not going to cut it. The Zealot's walking back here to try to get something accomplished. But this is going to be GG. Jumper a little... So, seeing some of that creativity, unfortunately this time, the creativity working against him played risky. And that's one thing with trying to go for more of the... And I, it's almost unfortunate because I would have wanted to see what he's going to try to do with this Reaver play. And actually, it might have been interesting if he had scouted and seen... The lack of, of uh, Spire and actually played from there. But otherwise, this is going to be GG. I'm not sure why Jumper actually has not called GG just yet. This game is certainly over. But anyway, look for Jumper in the upcoming season. I believe he also streams as Jumper on Twitch TV. And he has a lot of fun builds. Uh, also check him out and also check out STPL. That is the Shinhan Tank Pro League. It's put on by uh, Quicks, which... Yeah, a lot of fun matches right there, and that is mostly uh, official team matches between some Korean teams that are amateurs, some, uh, there's GG, uh, some European teams, some American teams. It's a blast. That's You'll see me there in chat quite often. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to move on to the next match, which actually I think the next grouping should be pretty interesting because we're going to have Rancor going up against Kiko. Thanks for listening.